make it clear. I got the Lord on my side, and with Him I'm gon' ride. Yeah. I ain't never scared, never scared, I ain't never scared. Hey. I got the Lord on my side, and with Him I'm gon' ride. I ain't never scared, never scared, hey. never scared. Hey. On our last program, we talked. I'm trying to get through this series of of. Um, the Ruach HaKodesh, also known as the Holy Spirit, and His attributes. But I also must talk about my Lord Jesus Christ's grace, which is the gospel, which is the good news. So I had to pass them all, both along and to combine both of them to work together, because they do work together. So I just want to testify a little bit about our Jesus Christ's grace and about His Holy Spirit, which comes from the scriptures, John 14, 16 through 17. Um, and all those things that you will be speaking or when you get to the, that uh, scripture is all the things we have been teaching about. If there's some good news, I'm definitely going to tell you about it. And as I said, the good news is Jesus Christ's gospel of grace and that he did leave you a comforter. Hallelujah. Call the Holy Spirit, also known as the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for him. I, I don't know what I would do without him. But before we move any further, let us pray in agreement. Because the Lord said one or two to, or three to come together in agreement, the prayer is already answered. Hallelujah. All right. Move me out of the way, Holy Spirit. Let me Give me directions and lead and guide me and speak through me as I know you can, and lead me and tell me what I need to do to teach about Jesus Christ's grace and about your attributes to our young people. And I thank you, my Father, for giving me another day and opportunity to do your will and to teach our young people about the Holy Spirit and the good news of Jesus Christ's gospel of grace in Jesus' powerful Almighty and wonderful name. Amen. Hallelujah. Like I said before, we talked about um, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and His grace. And that when you mess up, He even sends His grace to you to help you through your mess up. We talked about the Comforter. We talked about the Holy Spirit's mark of ownership, which go comes from the Scripture, 2 Corinthians 1, 22 22 and Ephesians 1 and 13. You don't belong to yourself anymore. Hallelujah. We talked about being ready. And it's time to choose. You know, now that you are knowing some of what the Holy Spirit is and who He is and what He does, the Holy Spirit would teach you to have a living relationship with the Lord. We also talked about uh, five ways of, of how to meditate how I do it anyway, on the verse and renew your mind with our Father's Word. Number one, picture it. Number two, pronounce it. Number three, paraphrase it. Number four, personalize it. Number five, pray it. And how you must renew your mind and doing it this way through meditation works. Then we talked about in the book of John, uh, of the book of John 1, 1 through 25 and verse 14, which you can always uh, speak later. And using, I, I paraphrased and used my words saying that about uh, the word was God and is God. And in Matthew 1, 23, it says his name is also called Emmanuel, which means God is with us and he dwells among us. And then we talked about the book of Proverbs 4, 22 which says his word, he will bring, which says in his word, he will bring life to those who find him. So look for him, seek him while he can be found, and help to all their flesh. Now I kind of brought y'all up to date, let's move forward. The Holy Spirit will give you a fresh revelation and knowledge when you're reading and speaking our Heavenly Father's Word on a daily basis. You do have to spend time with Him. I cannot go a day without spending some time with my Lord. I'm not going to say I jump up in the morning all the time, and uh, and I like to do that because that's when I'm so fresh. I'm really fresh in mind. 
but I don't just jump up every morning and uh, spend time with the Lord. Sometime it may be throughout the day, but you better believe I'm going to spend some time with him because my day ain't right without it. I have to sit, spend time with him, listen to his word, speak his word, pray, take communion. I take communion every day, and I want y'all to know you can do that. Take communion every day, and that's another subject about the Holy Communion, which is the, the Last Supper, but it's a healing supper. And also, you know, uh, the, for forgiveness of our sin, we do this until Jesus come back. We do it in remembrance of him. I do communion every day. Hallelujah. So I'm still getting ahead of myself and I'm dropping off my subject. So let me get back to it. He will teach you what it means to live in Jesus Christ's grace and his finished works and what was done for you up on the cross. He will show you how to begin to supernaturally abide and rest. In Jesus' finished works, you will begin to understand and experience his unmerited, undeserved favor, also known as his grace, each and every day of your life. His grace is powerful and it's all about supplying your needs. Hallelujah. In the book of John 1.17, it says, and I got testifying about grace, but I also will speak some about the laws because we don't live under the laws anymore. We're under grace, under Jesus Christ. When he died and said it's finished, that was he was the final sacrifice. With the laws, they had to have a atonement, a, a fest, or not, it wasn't a fest, but atonement every year to atone for their sins. Every year, every year, several animals were sacrificed. That's the blood, because there's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. <laughs> Anyway, they had to do this every year, the Israelites, every year. That's under the laws of Moses. Jesus was our final sacrifice, the end. No more. He died for all of our past, present, and future sins. Hallelujah. His body was broken for us up on that cross. He took all of our addictions, our sicknesses, our illnesses, diseases upon himself. He is healing for us. Hallelujah. <laughs> So let me tell you about, I'm telling you a little bit about the laws, a little about the verses, the laws versus the grace of Jesus Christ. In the book of John 117, it says Moses bought the laws, but Jesus Christ bought grace and truth. The Holy Spirit would teach, lead, and guide you into knowing everything our Heavenly Father tells him to tell you. Let me read that again. The Holy Spirit will teach, lead, and guide you into knowing everything our Heavenly Father tells Him to tell you. As I stated before, His grace through the Holy Spirit will teach you how to become a Christian and become free and whole through Jesus Christ's unmerited and undeserved favor. Ain't nothing you can do about to get it. Nothing you can do to get it. Nothing. You don't deserve it, but He give it to us anyway. It's a gift from our Heavenly Father. All you have to do is just receive it and believe it. Amen. That uh, Back to those, uh, Moses brought the laws. 3,000 people died at Mount Sinai. 3,000 people were saved uh, in Acts. When the grace was be, uh, coming and when the Holy Spirit came. I think it's in Acts. Let's go to it. Because I, I don't like to mess up the Lord's word. So go to Romans, I mean, sorry, Acts. I think it's Acts 2. Acts 2. Yep. Acts 2, when the Holy Spirit came. Uh, it's in chapter Acts 2, uh, verses 1 and 2, uh, 1 through 4. All right, and I'm going to speak it to you. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. Now, this is when, you know, Jesus, when he died and ascended to heaven, he said he would not leave them comfortless, that he was sent the comforter. And this is when the Holy Spirit came, was in Acts. All right. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Remember I told you, you can't see him, but he, it's like the wind. You can't see it either, but you can feel him. Hallelujah. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto him them cloven tongues. <coughs> Excuse me. Cloven tongues. 
excuse me, like as a fire. That would be something to see. Excuse me. Oh, tickling in my throat. And it's set up on each one of them. Now that would be something to see some cloven fire, uh, cloven tongues that like fire up over your head. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is actually when the Holy Spirit actually came. Um, and they were all at with one accord in one place. And when the Holy Spirit actually came um, through the apostles, he came. Like Jesus said, I would not leave you comfortless, comfortless. He will send us a comforter. He had to go away, but he, he didn't leave us alone. And I'm glad he didn't. So I love knowing who the Holy Spirit is. Go with me to Ephesians 2 and 8. Ephesians 2 and 8. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and 8. Like I was telling you, Jesus does it all for you if you let him. He's enough for you. You don't have to do anything anymore. Well, you know, some of the things you have to do, but some things you don't have to do. You've been forgiven. You don't have to repent of sins anymore. You've been forgiven. That's it. Eternal forgiveness. Eternal redemption. Okay, um, Ephesians 2 and 8. Verse 8. This is about grace. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that's not of uh, yourself. It is a gift from God. You don't deserve it, but he give it to you anyway. Because just as I had spoken to his word, this came from the word. It's a gift from my Heavenly Father to you. All you have to do is just receive it and believe it. And in other words, it's not as any result of any effort, ability, intelligent choice, or act of service to others on your part. Tell me, young people, when someone gives you a gift, do you say, that's very thoughtful of you, thoughtful of you. Now, how much do I owe you for this gift? You would not say that. The appropriate response to someone giving you a gift is thank you. And we do thank the Lord for giving us this gift of grace and that we are saved through our faith. And that is nothing I've done. He did it for us all. Yet, young people, how often do some Christians, even after they have been given a gift of free salvation, feel like they have to try and work or trying to earn their way to our Heavenly Father? They, they be up under the laws. Those people that do that are under the laws. They are under the Mosaic, Mosaic laws. We're not under laws anymore. The laws don't do nothing but bring unbelief, doubt, death. Nothing good comes from the Lord. Cond uh, the, the law, I'm sorry. Condemnation, guilt, and shame. Leave the laws alone and come to Jesus Christ's grace. This is called self-effort, doing everything by yourself. You don't need no help. I can do this myself. Self-effort only means that you're trusting and depending on yourself, not upon our Heavenly Father. That's a no-no. Let Him do the work for you. Jesus did not die up on the cross for nothing, people. He died for you to give you life. As I stated before, when you let the Holy Spirit come into your life, you are not alone anymore. He will help you to be what our Father God created you to be. Hallelujah. You know something else, young people? Those Christians who are trying to work their way through their own self-effort, uh, I prayed five times today. Uh, I go to church. I have a great attendance. I do this and I do that. That's not what it's about. they trying to work their way through with their own self-efforts, trying to do everything themselves to get to our Heavenly Father. They are still living under the laws of Moses and not under the grace of Jesus Christ. When you're living under the laws of Moses, you make everything Jesus Christ has done for us up on that cross void. Don't mean nothing. There's nothing he did. What? 
is void. Remember what I said about let go, the let go life, meaning let go and let God. Have you heard this song or that they're playing on the radio today by Michelle uh, Williams, I think that's her name, that says when Jesus says yes, no one can say no because he's in control. He is truly in control of it all. Amen. There can be no more self-effort on your part. You are not alone anymore. You now have help. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. Let him lead and guide you. He will not give you any wrong directions or lead you down the wrong path. Young people, I want you to know, as I stated earlier, the laws of Moses bring death. In the Old Testament on Mount Sinai, 3,000 people died. In the book of Acts 2, 4, and 1, 3,000 people were saved. The bondswoman, Hagar, means bondage. Sarah, Abraham's wife, means freedom. The grace of Jesus Christ brings life, not death. And because of his salvation and faith given to you through Jesus, through Jesus, you will have life and have it more abundantly. From this day forward, you should always respond with gratitude. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For your grace and for your mercy. Praise and joyfulness for what Jesus Christ did for you up on the cross. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, young people. Are you still not convinced about the Holy Spirit? Well, let me tell you, as I've stated before, Jesus loves you. And that he only wants the best for you. You are his beloved child. And if you don't know anything else, know that Jesus loves you. And nothing can ever separate you from his love. You can read that about that in Romans 8 and 38 through 39. Once again, Romans 8, 38 and 39. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You are the apple of his eye. He knows how many hairs up on top of your head. Ain't that something? There's no way I can count all these. I don't even have a whole lot of hair, but there's no way I can count each and every strand on it. He knows how many hairs are on top of your head. In the book of Psalms 139, it teaches that he knows all about you. He knows your beginning and your end. He prepared your day for you while you were sleeping last night. He prepared your day for you while you were sleeping last night. Because you know when you're sleeping, that's the only time you really still. So he prepares your day. So when I get up in the morning, I say, thank you, Father, for preparing my day. And whatever may happen this day, I can face it. Because I know you prepared it, and I just thank him for it. He, <laughs> it is the truth, especially as some of us women. We, go, you know, we, we talk and we move. We got so much that we have to do. So he, he does it while you sleep. Uh, <clears throat> as I've stated from the book of Matthews 10, 30, uh, chapter, uh, verse, I'm sorry, from the book of Matthew 10, verse 30, it says he knows how many hairs up on top of your head. See, I got ahead of myself. That's where you can get that scripture from, though. As Jesus, all Jesus wants to do is love you and be everything in your life. And excuse my English, but once again, ain't that some good news? Now, young people, as I've stated before, any of this can happen. You must first seek the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Go with me to Matthew 6, 33. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 33. Oh, thank you, Father. And then I want to just read a little bit about why it's, um, this is the, uh, the, 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 the chapter where it says to worry is a sin. So do not worry. And that starts from verse 25 on. Take no thought. Take, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body and what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? And you can read all the way from there, which it says, Why take the, the this is verse 28, drop to 28. 
And why take ye thoughts for raiment? That's your closing. clothing. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Hallelujah. So there, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles see. For you, for your heavenly Father, knows that you have need of all these things. He knows what you need before you even know what you need. And he will provide it for you. He is a God supplying, supplier of provision, that's for sure. And it's through his grace. Excuse me. Now we're down to verse 33. But first seek ye, first seek you, first seek you first, excuse me, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All these things will be added unto you. You must first seek the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Hallelujah. And then 34 says, take Therefore, no thought for tomorrow or next week. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So whatever is going on today is sufficient. The Lord will take you, take care of you throughout this day. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew 6, 33 says, You must first seek the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Seek him first in your life, in every area of your life. But you first got to give your life to the Lord. You got to give your life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just give your life to him. Just go down to on a Sunday. Just go down that aisle and say, hey, Lord, I, I believe that you were, that you died for me. You know, do Romans 10 and 9. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Confess with your mouth. Give your life to the Lord. Seek him first. Let him into your life. And watch it change. You can't, it can't help but to change because the Lord's going to be so good to you. It's going to change and you want to be good to him. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. For he's worthy of all the praise and all the honor. It all belongs to him. Hallelujah. In the book of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it teaches you. You must always acknowledge him and believe that he is real and that his word is true. In other words, when you give Jesus first place in your life, it means that you will turn to him first with all things relating to your life. There's no big thing. There's no little thing to God. It's all the same. Come to him. I know many of you will try to get Jesus' approval through your own self-effort. But none of this works when it comes to the spiritual things of our Heavenly Father. I know some of you don't trust anyone. You have doubt. You don't believe that Jesus can help you with your problems. I'm here to tell you he can. When you do this, you are telling Jesus that you don't need him. That you can do it all by yourself. You're actually making void all that Jesus has done for you on the cross. Young people. Jesus declared, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Be free today. Give your life to him. Tomorrow may be too late. Some of you may not know what sin is, so let's define what sin is. Because some people really don't know what it is. I mean, you know, they hear the word, but do they really know what sin is? So I'm going to give you Mary Webster's dictionary, uh, uh, definition of what sin is. It is an immoral act considered to violate the divine laws of God, a serious offense against God. Sorrow goes with the purity of heart. It is the one who is pure in heart who has peace in their soul, also known as the mind. Peace is a natural product of forgiveness of your sins. Jesus died on the cross. This is good news. 
Jesus died on the cross, forgiving us of all our past, present, and future sins. He was the final sacrifice. When he said it is finished, it is finished. It's done. Your sins are forgiven. Okay, your sins are forgiven. You got to get to this people. He forgave us of all your past, present, and future sins when he died for you up on that cross. Peace is a natural product of the forgiveness of sin, of the cleansing of your heart by our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and you will have no peace until you've been forgiven of your sins. And I just told you, he forgave you of all your sins up on the cross. Go with me to John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Hallelujah. John 14, 27. Be there, speak. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives unto you. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Read, uh, go down, drop to 28. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Okay, peace, 27. He leaves his peace with us. And not as the world, because there's not no peace in the world. He, I give unto you, not as the world, give unto give, give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. Did you know that the unbelief is the mother of all sins? Unbelief is the mother of all sins and rejecting our Jesus Christ. Go with me to John 16. That's the next page. You're right there at it. 16, 7 through 10. John 16, 7 through 10. You there speak. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on him, unbelief. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Drop to 11. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. That's the devil. Hallelujah. One more time. Uh, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for, for you that I go away. He had to go away in order for the Holy Spirit to come. If he didn't go away, the Comforter would not have came. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, Lord. Okay, I got to stop right there. And you will see him no more. Okay, and we will pick this up on my next program. We almost finished, folks. Uh-huh. That's right. Now what we see, lies, never true. It's what he do. Tell me, come on. Now lift your voice and make it clear. I got the 